Okay, here's the veneer that I'm going to be using for the front face of the clock. Now this is, I think, Aspen. It's very thin, about 0.6 of a millimetre, and it's got a very light colour, and I already know that the light from the LEDs transmits through this fairly easily. I've tested out the other veneers that I have, and this one's the best one as far as transmitting the light through. This is the material I'll be using for the outside of the clock frame. This is English oak, and I've got two consecutive layers out of a tree, and that allows me to get a really nice book match pattern in the veneer. Well, I do that correctly. There it is there. So you can see the medullary rays now are mirrored on either side of that book match pattern. So that's going to give a nice effect to the outside of the frame. Now, I made up this one here, this uh, test piece that I did. You can see the laser cut openings for the seven segment displays in the back. And that looked pretty good and I was able to test out the LEDs behind that and be sure that worked. Now, there is a bit of an issue with putting veneer on a very thin panel like that and it doesn't matter whether it's MDF or plywood or solid wood. As the glue under the veneer dries, it exerts a force on the, the, uh, the substrate underneath the veneer and what you end up with is a, a curve. And if I put a straight edge on that, you should be able to see that it's got quite a distinctive curve in the face. Uh, don't want that. So the only way around that is to put veneer on both sides to create a balance. Now, because we have to laser cut that, it sort of becomes a bit problematic because obviously one side can't be laser cut all the way through. So what I'm planning to do is take a blank piece of MDF, we'll veneer one side, then we'll laser cut through and then we'll add just a blank piece of veneer to the other side. Hopefully that is going to stay relatively flat. Now you might say, well, just use something thicker, <laughs> but my laser uh, can cut up to about four millimeters fairly easily. After that, it's sort of like a multi-pass thing. Uh, it gets a bit messy. So we're gonna to have to stick with this thinner material. But obviously, if you have a CNC router, go for it. See this veneer is quite um, uh, warped and makes it a little bit hard to cut and the one thing you don't want to do is to split the veneer if you can help it and when you're slicing across the grain like this uh, the idea is that you take the knife and you score the veneer first don't try and cut right through just slowly deepen the cut as you go now the danger point is just here where the the knife is going to pull off that edge and if you dig the knife in and pull, it's just going to split along the grain. So what I normally do is cut through almost to that edge. And you sort of hear it when it slices through completely. And then just reverse the knife. Now this time drag the knife back toward the center. And that just gives the veneer some support. And there it is. So that's going to be our balanced veneer, we'll get that uh, bonded down, then we can laser cut through. And you can see there, there is a split there, I didn't see that before I started, but we can tape that together and when it's bonded down the tape comes off. Remember this is the back so I'm not going to fret too much about it. To make the front panel for this clock we need to be able to put veneer on both sides of a piece of 3mm thick MDF. Uh, the back side of the display panel will eventually be cut through with the laser to form the apertures for the light to show through. So the veneer we put on the back side of this panel doesn't have to be a really high quality or doesn't have to be, um, you know, grain patterns really not that important. The only reason we're putting veneer on the back of this is to balance the shrinkage caused by the gluing and veneering process. So I've chosen a piece of veneer for the back which has got a couple of little defects in it. This had a split 
in the corner here and I've just held that split together with some masking tape. So when I glue this one down, uh, we'll make sure the masking tape is on the outside when we do that. Now, it's another thing, uh, when I made this one, this is a test piece that I made early on, just to verify the technique. The glue that I used for this one was a cold press uh, veneer glue by Tight Bond. I'll show you what that looks like. Now this is the recommended glue for uh, veneer work uh, and it, it works really well. It's sort of fast setting, uh, it's quite strong, it, it spreads evenly and so on. The only problem is it's designed to dry with a slightly brown colour and you can see that the excess glue has bled through from that aperture there and left that quite a distinctive brown colour. Now when we put the LED display behind that aperture there it sort of blocks the light coming through and although it's, you know, I can notice it and most other people may not if you see it for the first time but either way I wasn't happy with that so when I do this one I'm going to use uh, just ordinary PVA glue which dries clear and I'm going to put the glue on with a roller so I can control the glue film a bit better. I did this one with a brush and a lot of the glue sort of built up inside the aperture there. So uh, I'm also making this clock front a little bit higher. It's a bit wider this way and that's giving me a bit more room inside the clock fitting up the displays. So let's go ahead and get this one glued. So this is just ordinary PVA but I've added about 15% water to that just to make it a bit thinner and that allows you to roll it out quite uh, freely on that piece of MDF. So what you don't want to do is to have the glue go off or start to set before we get the veneer together. So this extends the drying time enough so you can spread the glue, get everything together fairly easily. And it's important that you put the glue on the substrate. If you put it on the veneer it will almost certainly buckle really badly. Now I know it looks like I'm using a lot of glue, most of that has gone into the roller. So when you start to see that white film on the surface, we're getting close. And you know you should be able to feel it has a film on that surface there. A couple of layers of newspaper help to absorb any excess moisture that's there. Just make sure you didn't accidentally twist anything and get your clamps on. Okay, three clamps will be enough on that. Uh, I'm going to leave this overnight and we'll check it again tomorrow. Alright, that's come out nice and flat. No bubbles, um, no loose edges anywhere. So we're going to trim the back of this now just all the way around. Then we're going to laser cut right through. Now this is the back side of the display panel. This will be the front. Once you've lasered through that, we'll glue our other sheet of veneer on the front. We'll just run the extents of that job just to be sure it's going to fit on the stock. It's a bit tight, but I've checked it at both corners, so I've actually fired the laser at the top left hand corner and the top right hand corner and it's on the material so I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and cut it out.
All right, that's not bad. It's sort of not completely cut through. Bit of a mystery. I cut one yesterday, used exactly the same settings and it came out perfect. Oh, a couple of those are a bit stubborn. Um, I'm running uh, roughly a 40 watt tube here and that was running at seven millimeters a second and 72% of the power of the tube. And a couple of these might need to be cut through with a knife. Oh, there it is with all the windows cut out. Yes, yes, that is cool. Ah, oh, stop that, that's childish. So after doing the veneer on that other side and doing the laser cutting, there's still a significant bow in that piece of material. So if we put the straight edge on there, it's about two millimeters, three mil high in the center. And hopefully putting the veneer on both sides is gonna flatten that out. So we're about to do that now. And once again, using PVA because it should dry clear and I've just got to be a little bit careful that we don't get too much glue running down the edges of those perforations. So once again we're looking for that sort of almost white film on the surface and it should sort of feel wet okay I think we're good to go but this is very much a one-shot deal <laughs> I don't have a lot of veneer left and if we screw this up it's a a lot of steps to get back to this point I'm just going to swap out my newspaper here Okay, check that tomorrow. All right, that's looking good. And the most important thing is that in the back now where these windows are, there's no discoloration. So we're gonna get nice, clean transfer of light through those cells to the front veneer there. So I'll get this trimmed up and sanded, see how it looks. Okay, I've just gone around and trimmed all that with a knife and I'll give that a sand around that edge later on. But what I need to do now is get the front face of that panel sanded smooth and you can use a sanding block and some fine paper. And of course, over the, the years that uh, veneer gets discolored by exposure to UV light and you can sand these areas, they're fine. But where the veneer is, because it's flexible, uh, and there's nothing in the back of that window to support the veneer. As you press down the sanding block, the veneer just depresses underneath the pressure of the block. So you end up getting, uh, like, you can actually see the outlines of the digits after a while. So what we need to do is get some support behind that veneer so we can sand the whole of that front face. And the trick to doing that is to get these little pieces, uh, the waste material from the, the laser cutting process, and push them into that window. So I'm going to go ahead and get all these in here and then we'll look at the sanding process. I'll just do half of these. <laughs> And all you do is put a board on top, flip it over, and then I'm going to sand just this end. Now, I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's, you can almost, I can see it from here. I, actually, I can see it on the monitor. You can see the colors change where those windows are. So let's go ahead and give that a sand.
All right, that's pretty good. Uh, the color's fairly uniform. This will need to have another sand later before we put the varnish on. But it feels good. It's nice and flat, so I'm going to flip it around to the other end and then we'll have a look at the next step. Even though I make a digital mock-up of these projects, it's always a good idea to physically lay it out on the bench and just make sure everything's going to fit the way you expect. It's always something unexpected. So I went ahead yesterday and I made a sample joint. Uh, so this is just MDF. I just glued that together and held it together with tape. And the glue that I used is this stuff. It's um, a Gorilla PVA. Uh, I did have some PVA glue, but I'm not sure what the shelf life is, but it didn't seem to be gripping all that well. This stuff is very good. I haven't tested that joint to destruction yet, but it seems to be quite strong, so I'm happy with that. I also rounded off that corner there, and later on when we put our front panel on, we'll have to sand and plane all of that so it's completely flush with the edges of that panel. Now the other thing I wanted to check was uh, to see whether I had enough clearance inside for all the internal bits and pieces. So what we have to be able to fit is the 3D printed spacer and uh, the LED panel itself. So that all seems to fit in there okay. It was mainly this clearance in here I was worried about. And then I wanted to be able to fit the microcontroller so the USB port is at the back of the case. Now with it there it's sort of not quite right there's just not quite enough clearance but I can put it down in between the minutes and the hours and then I've got plenty of room to fit that so it's just going to get screwed to the bottom of the case and then the USB port has to be accessible from the back of the clock so I'm going to laser cut a panel that's just a, a color print full size so I can check how that's going to go and this is an example of you know how things can go wrong. I originally drew the hole for the USB port too high, and when that's sitting there, I've had to adjust its position so the USB port will be accessible. And I still need to have room for my 5 volt connector and my three switches, so that's why that USB port had to be lowered. So that's why you mock it up. <laughs> Now, uh, enough procrastinating, I really need to get on and actually glue this together. Just before I do that, let's just see how strong this joint is. Now remember, there's no reinforcement here, this is just PVA. Well, that's interesting. It's almost like the glue is stronger than the, the fibres in the MDF. And that being end grain, uh, it sucks a lot of that PVA into the end pores of that material. But there's, there's quite a lot of, you know, MDF that's been left behind on that joint. That's more than adequate for what we're doing. That's not bad, that's just a tiny fraction over size. But we'll go ahead and get this carcass glued up. And then we're just going to put it back on it, fit all the guts, and we're done. <laughs> it's never that easy though, is it? This piece of plywood here is just to keep everything aligned while I tape that together. it all folds up uh, but this all depends on the accuracy of your mitre joints here if they're wrong <laughs> it's not going to work but that seems to be pretty good so let's get these joints painted with glue and just tape it all together Just while I'm doing this, there is a thing you can do where you can prime a joint like this 
with a thin coating of PVA, let it dry and then when you're ready to glue up put a fresh coating on top and what that does is it just allows one layer of glue to absorb into the fibres of the material and seal it off and then your second coat of PVA grips to the first. If you're doing it like I am here you've got to be a little bit careful to get a move on not have it dry before you get it clamped up. I'm really putting on more than I need here. I'm going to get a lot of squeeze out. But I'm not clamping this, so I want to make sure we get a good coating and a good bond. Okay, I just realised I did all that off camera, but there it is. When you put that tape on, you stretch it. Right? Masking tape has the ability to stretch and it puts the tape under tension and that tends to pull the joint together at that corner. And there's the squeeze out on those joints there. Not terribly worried about that on the outside. That's all going to be sanded and planed, but these insides need to get them cleaned up. No, it's just checking out at the square and that's perfect. So we'll let that set and then we can get our front panel bonded on and then trim all of this and get our veneer on. Well, that's had plenty of time to set so I'm just going to take the tape off. Well that seems to turn out good. Uh, this top edge is pretty level. Might need a little bit of a plan to get that dead flat. And I'm not going to bond this uh, panel on until we've got all of the assembly done on the back of this. So we need to mount the spacers, the LED panels, get all the wiring tucked away nice and neatly. If we um, try to do that later, it's going to be a bit of a mission to poke around inside here to get all that done. Now it's time to glue these displays to the back of this front panel and I want to make sure I get them lined up as accurately as I can with the perforations or the cutouts. So I'm just using one of these spare 3D prints to trace around and then I can align my displays accurately. So if I get my display lined up with that pencil mark and then just run some super glue under that edge, that'll bond that down nice and tight. All right, so I've got that lined up as best I can. I'm just going to run some glue under that edge. Alright, so rinse and repeat, do all of that, we'll get all this bonded down. So the capillary action draws that glue underneath that edge. Okay, well, I don't think I'm going to use any more than that. That's tons. That's never going to come off there without damaging something. So we'll let that cure and then we can get the front of the clock onto the carcass. <laughs> Just checking the other side. <laughs> the last thing you want to see is that super glue bleeding through the veneer on the other side. But it's looking okay.
So these slots here are to take some feet which are going to support the clock carcass. And I need to put them in now because when I put the MDF front on the clock it will hide that slot. And these are reminiscent of the old fashioned TV consoles. I think the, the very first TV my parents owned when I was a child had a rectangular cabinet with um, four feet coming off at this sort of angle. And uh, I don't know, it just looked a bit old school and a bit nostalgic. So um, that's what we're going for. Okay, I think we're good to go to glue this together now. So I've just done a trial fit there and that all seems to be okay. So, nothing high tech here. So I'm thinking we got tons of gluing area. There's no load on this joint. So I'm not going to overdo the glue. I'd love to be able to put a nail in that just to keep it all secure and stop it slipping, but I can't. With that glue film underneath that edge, it is a bit slippery and slidey. And the last thing we want is for that to get skewed when we put the clamp on it. We have a tiny, tiny bit of overlap at the ends. It's flush at the bottom. I've got a fair bit on top, but that's okay and clean that off later. I'm just going to use the old gravity clamp. Alright, that bit's done. Okay, sadly I have to wind up episode 2 here, but in the next uh, part we're going to look at some of the very cool laser cutting action. We're going to also pre-finish some of the parts for the clock because there's a lot of work to go yet and I don't want to get anything dirty or damaged while we're doing that. We're going to look at some hand tools, um, that's always a bit of fun. And we're going to get to the point where we can start fitting the veneer to the outside of the clock and the actual carcass of the clock at least. So join me then and uh, for now, thanks for watching.